Hello everyone and welcome to another Followed House Friday. My name is Jeremy, the Museum Services Manager for the Sandusky Library and Followed House Museum. And this week we're actually coming from the bottom of the Sandusky Library in the Archives Room. Now, since we're in the new year, I wanted to pick an artifact that's been in our collection almost 100 years. Uh, so this artifact was donated in February of 1921. Uh, so let me get up on my chair here so we have a little bit of better view. Uh, so this is the flag of the 2nd Battalion Pioneer in the Pioneer uh, brigade. Now, pioneers, their job was building roads, bridges, things like that for the army. Uh, it was made up of men from many different regiments who were put, put together to serve that cause. A lot of carpenters, things like that. Uh, the Stone River part is the battle. Now, those of you familiar with Civil War history or with Ohio history might know the battle of Stone River in Tennessee. And that was because there was a lot of Ohio regiments that were a part of this. Um, now, it looks like the Stone River part of this was not added later, but made when this flag was originally put together. So that leads me to believe that this was made after the Battle of Stone River. Uh, the Battle of Stone River was December uh, 30th through January 2nd, uh, 1862 to 1863. Uh, now, the Pioneer brigade uh, actually made a very famous stand against the confederates on december 31st 1862 so it's really neat that we have this uh, piece of artifact from that regiment it does have 30 35 stars if i remember correctly when i crowned it which was the amount of states before the civil war uh, of course others were added like west virginia so this flag is relatively old um how it got to us is interesting. So this uh, flag belonged to a man by the name of Joshua B. Davis. Uh, he was originally from New York, moved to Sandusky, though, before the Civil War, uh, was drafted, joined the 101st Ohio Volunteer Infantry. And after the war, he came back to Sandusky. He worked in the Customs House for a little bit. Uh, then he ran an insurance agency. And he also ran the Catawba Candy Company here in town. Well, he was their head clerk. Rather, he didn't run it. Uh, but in 1919, he moved away to Oregon. In 1921, he unfortunately died, and they came back to Ohio, and he's actually buried out in Oakland Cemetery. So we are very lucky that we, uh, that we have this flag. Uh, his wife donated to us, and that's why I believe it was February that she donated it to the library in 1921 when they were back for her husband's funeral. Uh, so we've had this, like I said, since 1921. So it was longer in our collection than it was outside of its collection, outside of the collection now. Um, it is in pretty good shape for how old it is. Um, I'm going to get down my chair and show you a little bit. You can see here there's a crease from where it was folded and stored for many years. Um, and then on this end... There's lots of holes and rip. The, the, the flag is very thin, uh, almost like a silk-like material. Uh, so we had to be very careful in wrapping it. Um, and that's, you know, part of our job, obviously, at the library, to make sure that things like this stay preserved and stay as part of the Sandusky story. And we're just, you know, for me, it's really fun to find things like this in our collection and be able to show them. Because who knows the last time this was actually taken out of its box. And unfurled. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm always happy to answer them. Uh, I hope you, everyone has a happy new year, and I'll see you next week for another Followed House Friday. Enjoy your weekend.